And the PM has added to the pressure on the former head of the post office, saying that he would support a probe into Paula Venels and her CBE. But while <clears> all <throat> political parties have said they want the matter resolved, and quickly, no party has their hands entirely clean in the matter. Should we just take a look at how mm. all three major parties has at some point let down the postmasters and rewarded the post office bosses for it? Big deep breath. Former chief executive Paula Venels earned £5 million and was handed the CBE in the 2018 honours list by Theresa May for leading privatisation, which of course began under Cameron and Osborne. Well, Osborne's best man, Peter Davies, worked for a firm which made £36 million from the Royal Mail sell-off. Former chairwoman Alice Perkins earned £100,000 a year from 2011 to 2015 and is now married to Labour's former Home Secretary, Jack Straw. Well, the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, was, as we've been telling you this morning, the Director of Public Prosecutions from 2008 to 2013. He now says all cases should be revisited and the CPS should take over, but he failed to do that when he was in charge. And the Lib Dems. They had ministers in charge of the post office during the height of the scandal, including current leader Sir Ed Davey, who won't speak to anybody. Well, shall we speak now to the Times columnist, Hugo Rifkin, who's in the studio? Legend. Hugo. Good morning. Good morning. Look... All the parties want this sorted and yeah. swiftly, and there's no sort of suggestion that they can completely undo the wrongs that have already happened. But what we realise in trying to sort of attribute blame or work out who should be responsible, who should help contribute to the compensation, there is wrongdoing in so many different uh, pockets. And at the very sort of the very best interpretation of it is there are politicians from all parties who could have done a lot more to help much sooner. Absolutely. I mean, the, 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 this is a fascinating it's a fascinating story on a variety of levels. One reason why it's fascinating is that it's taken so long to hit public consciousness. Mm. There's this sort of myth floating around that this story wasn't known about, wasn't reported about. It was all over the papers for years. It was just quite impenetrable, quite hard to understand, a little bit boring. No one quite focused on it. What this fantastic ITV drama has done it's focused a huge amount say of... say a lot, though, does it, about the system? They like took an ITV drama. We were doing it a year ago. You was a yeah, journalist sure. for years. It's appalling, man. Well, it, it, it is, but it's quite hard to pin down the bit that, that really, really excites people, that really, really gets people going. There's a lot of injustice in the world. This is a particularly bad one. I think it's, I think it's wonderful that it's, it's hit the headlines in yeah. this kind of way. But, I mean, the, the, the question is now uh, whether we are focusing on justice for the people who were wronged or the, the, the pursuit of the people who are responsible and turned a blind eye to, it, mm. to that. Those are, those are two different issues. I, I I'm the really, former is more important. I'm really, important. really, really strong on this. I actually yeah. don't think at the moment it's about money. I think it's about exonerating these people. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think they should be put through the trauma of another court appearance. I think all 750 should have their uh, cross-party agreement, all of this quashed straight away. And, and those who are... There will be... I think there will be criminal investigations. Sir Ed Davies mm. made a career out of slagging off the Tory party and the Labour Party calling for resignations. He was the prime... He was the post office minister, refused to take a meeting in this debate and has now not said anything for two days. He, I think, is in quite a wobbly position. I indeed. think he's in yeah. a very but, wobbly position. But, I mean, I position. think you're right about the prosecutor because basically every one of the... You would think, with what we know now, every one of these prosecutions... Uh, should it come back to court, should it be appealed, would fall. Knowing that, they should. you're right, I agree with you Go completely. On. And Strike. take the trauma, because we spoke, didn't we, to a lot of people, Rosie, and, and we're not even talking about money here. People who, in local communities, were shunned, ostracised, yeah. people who died having not proven their mm -hmm. innocence, people who tried to take their lives. This is much deeper than just a money issue. This is a human issue. I've written about this, actually, in The Times today, in my column, about, and it's the one of the scary aspects of this, for everyone, not just the people involved, it's the faceless aspect. Mm. It's when you get caught up in a system and there's nobody to call. His computer says no, you know, and that's what you come up against and there's nowhere to go. There's no human to call. And as we sort of, as our society moves forward, as we rely more on automation, on AI, things like that, we're all going to be in this kind of situation yeah. where things go wrong and we just don't know who to phone about it. Uh, the most heartbreaking thing for me is that people had faith that when things had gone wrong, they did have this helpline that yeah. did absolutely the opposite and then when they get the engineers come round the postmasters think help is finally here it wasn't really part of their mm. thought process to think no these are the people who are going to do me for wrongdoing and i'm going to end yeah. up in in jail i'm going to be told by my barrister you'll avoid a custodial sentence which has been told yesterday so you go i did it and then the post office prosecute you yeah. i mean appalling and now they this is my bugbear your bugbear is what you said is that they're marking their own homework they're deciding liability that's a joke this is why you now need prosecutions, because you need to reinforce the idea that even when we are blaming computer systems for stuff, computers said, no, there's got to be a person. There's got to be somebody who's responsible. 
and who knows they're responsible, in this case and all cases like it.